hey, let's talk about populism, okay? Uh, for a part of, of a problem for farmers during this time is you have unrest in rural America, okay? In the 1890s, you get a political movement called populism, okay? It emerged to increase the political power of farmers and to work for legislation for farmers' interests. Uh, the nation's money supply really concerned farmers this, at this time because they need money a lot of times. So to help finance, uh, one of the things they did was to help finance the Union Civil War, the government issued millions of dollars of greenbacks, which is paper currency that could not be exchanged for gold or silver. Okay, This rapid increase in the money supply without a rapid increase for goods for sale, this causes inflation, which made a decline in the value of the money. Uh, and then prices of goods started to increase. Uh, so to get inflation under control, the federal government stopped printing the greenbacks and started paying off bonds. Okay, the bonds are basically uh, you know loans that the government had taken out. Congress also stopped making silver into coins. Okay, this creates a big issue. So. Um, as a result, the country did not have a large enough money supply to meet the needs of a growing economy. Okay? Uh, this now leads to deflation, which is an increase in the value of money, but a decrease in the general level of prices. Uh, deflation forces most farmers to borrow money so they can plant their crops. They don't have enough money. Okay? Short supply of money causes an increase in interest rates that the farmers owed. So the farmers are just kind of getting banged on both sides here. Okay? Uh, so farmers wanted more greenbacks printed to expand the money supply again. So, and others wanted the government to mint more silver coins. So uh, they formed with the, the Grange. It was a national farm organization uh, founded for social and educational purposes. When the country experienced a recession, large numbers of farmers joined the, gr joined the Grange. The Grange then changed its focus to respond to the plight of the farmers. Grangers put their money together and created co-ops uh, or cooperatives, marketing organizations that worked to help its members. The cooperatives pulled members' crops and held, and held them off the market to force prices to rise. We still see this today. Uh, cooperatives could negotiate better shipping rates from the railroads. Uh, which the railroads were notorious for uh, hurting farmers at, at that time. The Grange was was unable to improve economic conditions for farmers, though. Uh, by the late 1870s, many farmers had left the Grange and joined other organizations that offered to help them to solve their problems. Okay, so in 1877, the Farmers' Alliance is formed. By 1890, it has uh, about one and a half to three, between one and a half and three million members with strength in the South and the Great Plains. It's primarily where a lot of your farmers are at. The Alliance organized large co-ops called exchanges for the purpose of forcing farm prices up and making loans to farmers at low interest rates. We saw that before with the Grange a little bit. Okay, um, These exchanges, though, they mostly failed. They weren't very effective. Okay. Um, Many exchanges overextended themselves. They loaned out too much money uh, at low interest rates that, couldn't, that weren't repaid. And then you had wholesalers, manufacturers, railroads, and bankers. They discriminated against the exchanges. Um, the exchanges were often too small uh, to dramatically affect world prices for their farm products. Members of the Kansas Alliance formed what was called the People's Party, or Populist, to push for political reforms that would help farmers solve their problems. Uh, most Southern leaders of the Alliance opposed the People's Party because they wanted the Democrats to re retain control of the South. Uh, one Southern uh, leader, Charles McCune, came up with a sub-treasury plan to set up warehouses where farmers could store their crops to force prices up. All right, so populism, the rise of an 1890, the Farmers Alliance issues the Ocala demands to help farmers choose candidates in the 1890 elections. These demands included the adoption of the sub-treasury plan, uh, the free coinage of silver, and an end to protective tariffs and national banks, tighter regulation of the railroads, and direct election of senators by voters. Remember, at this time, they don't the states select senators. Okay. Uh, many pro-alliance Democrats were elected to office in the South. By early 1892, Southern members of the Alliance began to realize that Democrats were not going to keep their promises to the Alliance, and they were ready to leave the Democratic Party and join the People's Party. 
July 1892, the People's Party held its first national convention where it nominated James B. Weaver to run for president. The People's Party platform called for unlimited coinage of silver, federal ownership of railroads, and a graduated income tax, one that uh, taxes higher earnings more heavily. It also called for an eight-hour workday re to restrict uh, restriction of immigration and denounce the use of strike breakers. Okay? Uh, we haven't talked about labor and that kind of stuff yet. We'll talk about that here pretty soon, but uh, this is one of the things they backed. Democrats nominated uh, New Yorker Grover Cleveland for the 1892 presidential election. Cleveland does end up winning the election. Uh, the in 1893, there was a panic was caused by the bankruptcy of the Philadelphia and Reading Railroads. Okay? It resulted in the stock market crash and closing of many banks. By 1894, the country was deep in a depression. Okay? Uh, so President Cleveland wanted to stop the flow of gold and make it the sole basis for the country's currency. So he had Congress repeal the Sherman Silver Purchase Act. Uh, this caused the Democratic Party to split into the gold bugs and the silver rights. Gold bugs believed the American currency should be based only on gold. Silverites believed coining silver in unlimited amounts was the answer to the nation's economic crisis. The election of 1896, Democrats nominated William Jennings Bryan for presidential election of 1896. Uh, he strongly supported the coinage of silver. Um, Populists also supported Bryan for president. The Republicans nominated William McKinley of Ohio for president. He promised workers a full dinner pail. Okay? So, in the election of 1896, most business leaders liked McKinley because they thought that unlimited silver coinage would ruin the country's economy. Uh, and this worked to McKinley's uh, uh, um, advantage. He did win the election in 1896. And then you have new gold strikes in Alaska and Canada's Yukon Territory and in other parts of the world, which increased the money supply without needing the use of silver. Uh, so as the silver issue died out, the Populist Party actually faded away because of this. Okay? Uh, and that does conclude our notes for tonight on the Populist Party. Look for another thing of notes uh, later on, which will take us into more of this stuff next week to kind of jump us ahead. Thank you for the time, and don't forget, you will have an Edmodo quiz uh, over these uh, notes uh, t tonight that will be due probably on Thursday. Okay? Thank you very much, and have a great day.